We have a great opportunity for PCA members. We're here at the Porsche Experience Center and what has just landed stateside? The 718 Boxster S. We're gonna get a sneak peek of what's underneath and inside of this car. I know a lot of us have seen this car on covers of magazines, we've seen road tests, but we've never seen the inside. And I have Andrew Lennon here. He's gonna show us, a little, give us a little tour on uh, how this all works. We know the driver's side intake is active. That's where the air comes in. And that's where it changes from this car versus the previous generation is what happens to that air. Right, exactly right. So with the new 2017 box, 718 Boxster S, we have an all new power plant. It's a four cylinder turbocharged flat four. Uh, so we have 350 horsepower in the case of the Boxster S that you see here, uh, 300 horsepower in the case of the 718 Boxster. Uh, so you're absolutely right. Airflow through the car is, is critical to how this car makes power, so we'll check out uh, how that all takes place. Now, you had, you had mentioned there's some amazing technology in terms of how the air is handled with this turbo. For those of you that have been around Porsche for a while, you know, we know of 911 turbos, we know of the turbo racing cars of the 70s. This is not unfamiliar territory for Porsche, but now we're seeing it in the Boxer, we'll see it in the Cayman, we've seen it in Macans. How does it all work? There's a lot of technology for this new turbo system. There is. There's a lot of technology put into the 718 Boxster. We're, in this particular case, we're using variable turbine geometry or VTG technology that was developed uh, from the 911 turbo. So they're bringing really halo model technology uh, to bring the power and performance to the Boxster product line, Boxster and Cayman. So you see a lot of these turbo cars out there, other makes and brands. You see intercoolers. Even the Porsches of back in the day, intercoolers were either s sitting out in the back on the fins or they're up in the center radiator. This has an intercooler that is like tucked away in the middle of the car. How does it cool being in such a confined space? So we have our air inlet on the driver's side of the car, uh, and then we're basically bringing air into our pan. Our filter element here. Uh, once our air is filtered, we're headed downstream to the inlet of the uh, compressor side of the turbocharger. We'll take a look at that from the bottom side. Once the air is pressurized, comes back up, runs through our intercooler, and then is ducted in through our throttle body, electronically controlled throttle body, as it's been for a number of years. And then we have our intake manifold nestled below that. So we have uh, equal air distribution to all four cylinders. Um, and then we'll take a look at the bottom side and check out the uh, camshaft control and everything else that's happening on the exhaust side. All right, someone hit the switch. Let's get this car up. So here we are. This is a view that m many owners won't get to see, but we're going to get to see it while it's brand spanking new. So keep us uh, on this tour, Andrew. Sure. So we just took the, the service or the covers off of this car. It's brand new off the truck with 11 miles. Um, we're starting to do our pre-delivery inspection. Uh, but basically, as we, we talked through on the top side, we're filtering our air and bringing it into the turbocharger, which you see here. Uh, so the compressor side of the turbocharger is unique to this engine, uh, 2.5 liter engine. Uh, once our air is filtered, brought into the compressor side, we're pressurized, send it back up to the intercooler. Um, so allow me to interrupt real quick. I ha um, at uh, PCA's Tech Tactics, I was able to see the new 911s with their twin turbos and where they were located, but I was also um, intrigued by kind of their small size and where this turbo seems to be more traditionally sized, I guess if you would say. It's a much larger turbo than the 911s. Yeah, that's a good point. So it, it it's a 2.5 liter in this case. The turbocharger is a bit bigger. On this particular engine, or Boxster and Boxster S, we're running a 9.5 to 1 compression uh, versus the uh, 911 Carrera is a 10 to 1 compression. So with that said, we're uh, pushing a little bit more boost pressure through these turbochargers from, uh, whereas on the Carrera, we're 0.9 bar to 1.1 bar. On this car, we're 1.1 to 1.4 bar of pressure. So quite a bit more use of the turbocharger to develop that, that additional power. Um, so the motor for the Boxster versus the Boxster S, how much of a difference in terms of the size of the, the four-cylinder and the turbo itself? Sure, so the uh, 
Turbo is completely different between the two variants. Um, for one, it's a bit smaller turbocharger on the 718 Boxster, but the big news is on the Boxster S, Cayman S, it's a variable turbine geometry. It's a VTG turbocharger, so that's unique to the S models um, and really helps develop that torque. We have a maximum torque, 309 pound-feet of torque in the S models from about 1,900 RPM up, uh, so it's able to develop that power quite low. That's staggering because not too long ago, 911s had just crossed that 300 horsepower threshold. And now we're talking Boxsters and Caymans at 350. Yeah, That's amazing. Yeah, seat of the pants, you'll definitely feel the torque uh, the first time you drive the car. All right, so let's keep going down the path. So from the, our uh, turbocharger outlet, we have our catalyst here, of course, um, is different between uh, 718 and 718S models. Uh, we then have our single exhaust flow um, which wraps around and then takes a trip up and over our drive shaft and suspension components. So from there you can basically see our disconnect points on both the driver and passenger side um, and then we have uh, finishing the exhaust tract uh, back to the mufflers where we share a resonance tube to, to develop the correct note that we want for this particular car. It definitely still needs to sound like a Porsche um, and uh, then out the tailpipes. In this particular case, this Boxster 718 Boxster S does not have sport exhaust. Um, were it to have sport exhaust, we would have a slightly smaller, reduced overall size muffler units um, on each side and we would have a throttle valve or a butterfly valve, if you will, here on the passenger side to basically close and open off a second tract for the exhaust uh, gases to flow. Now you bring up a very interesting point. Uh, obviously people look at the stats of the car, the power, the torque, um, but you mentioned the sound. Most people know that a normally aspirated car versus a turbo car can sound vastly different, but Porsche has taken the time to make sure that we still get the exhaust tone that we expect out of a Porsche. Definitely, it's a tremendous part of the development process um, to be sure that what's coming out the tailpipe and what the driver is hearing is is the sound that we want. Um, and that's definitely the case in this car. Uh, there are a number of changes uh, that are, that are or there are a number of tweaks made to this particular exhaust system developed for this engine. For example, uh, being that it's a four cylinder, we have two cylinders on each side, our exhaust manifolds, and you can see here that the exhaust manifold path is unequal length between the driver's and passenger's side. That's uh, partially for packaging of the turbocharger, but also by design. So with this newfound power in the Boxsters and the Caymans, you have to have the rest of the car keep up in terms of chassis tuning, suspension and brakes. So how has that changed for this new model? So with the additional power, as you said, we have an, a little bit reinforced brake system on both the 718 Boxster and Boxster S. Uh, we have revised chassis tuning all the way around um, to cope with that additional power and performance. So a nice option on the new Boxster S and Cayman S is our PASM Sport suspension, where we're 20 millimeter ride height reduced from the standard vehicle, similar to our previous generation uh, Boxster S Sport suspension X73 that we fitted to Boxster Spider, for example. Uh, uh, but in this case, it's all new because we have adaptive dampers brought to that. So we have that lower ride height, that sporty ride, but we have adaptive dampers, not only for increased comfort, but also better road holding at the performance end of the spectrum. The gearbox, in this case, the PDK transmission, as well as the manual transmission, which is fitted as standard, um, we have revised gear ratios to cope with that additional torque output um, and to, to be sure that we have both the right uh, acceleration characteristics as well as overall speed and, and handling of the car. Well, Andrew, I really want to thank you for giving PCA members an opportunity to get this close and personal with the new 718. Um, you know, for those of you that are watching, this is this car is quite exciting. I know a lot of PCA members are going to put their name down and uh, and probably bring one to an event nearby. So, thank you again. I appreciate it. Thanks very much. It's great to have you here.